thank you for joining. This is Movado, and I'm here with another Empyreon video today. But today I'm going to take a first look at Ascension RE Unchained. The new scenario that's been around for a few months now, I've seen it around on the workshop. Uh, I took a look at it and, you know, I was kind of interested by all the features that it had, what it tries to bring together, what it does. Uh, so today I just wanted to do a quick first look at what is this, what is this scenario, what does it all include, uh, what's in there? How do they design it? Um, kind of what's the future entail? Because there's still a lot of updates planned. So uh, to get started, let's just talk about what what is Ascension RE Unchained. And basically what they did is they took a combination of Reforged Eden, which is Reforged Galaxy and Project Eden merged into one. It takes those, plus it adds Star Salvage. Plus, they have, at this point already, uh, well over 600 hours of custom content through other quests and things that they've done in there. So that's just to get started, kind of the overall size of it. Uh, they do have many more releases and updates coming. I think they have a big one planned in January, but they're kind of just getting started with this, um, with this kind of this overall project. So it's kind of impressive, all the things that they have in there. Um, some of the new features, there's actually kind of a lot of different changes. So I said it was a combination of Reforged Eden star salvage and some of their own content but but they have their own spin on it so while they use that as the basis there's definitely a lot of changes that they do uh number one for for ease of gameplay number two uh, just to add some some uh better devices higher end things in the game um more uh cross compatibility between devices i'll get get through all that but first things first let's just jump into creative mode i have a session st set up and the reason why i wanted to go through the loading screen is because it will show one of the first things i want to talk about and that's the immersion that they've added right off the bat so on the loading screen hopefully it doesn't fail me yep perfect here on the right hand side if you read that starting planets and factions now relate so the following is an example of how the planet Planets will determine which faction you started affiliated with by which planet you choose to join the game first. Sorry, that went really fast. Uh, but basically what that means is whatever starting planet you pick is going to influence your your reputation with certain factions. So if you want to start friendly with the Xerox, I think you can actually do that. So all those different options, if you rewind the video, you can pause it, you can look at that. It gives you a breakdown of all the different factions in the game, where you can start, and how that ties to those factions to give you positive uh, reputation right off the bat. So that's kind of cool because it adds some immersion. That's always one thing I felt was missing out of vanilla is, is you kind of get dropped out of, out of a out of a pod you fall onto the planet and i guess you have some ties to uch but you're completely neutral with everyone and and you know i kind of thought the immersion part was missing because there's no prior connections like what alliances were you part of and who i know xerox didn't like you but but rather than starting neutral you'd, you'd have some level of basis and i think that kind of gives you that so i think that's kind of cool the other thing that i think is really really cool is is the bubble that they offer so uh, I'm in creative mode. I can't go out to the galaxy. I, um, um, but one thing that they did is, is when you look at the galaxy in normal gameplay, every faction has their own bubble. And up until now, you've never been able to influence that. Well, this is the first game that's been able to actually change that. You are able to, by wiping off enemies within their bubble, like around the edges of their system, and you can actually wipe out and change their bubble, and you can also create your own bubbles by taking over areas. So I'm going to work through that yet. This is, like I said, pretty brand new, but that's really cool. One thing that they've added is, is the ability to, number one, reduce the size of your enemy's bubbles, but also ensure and create your own bubbles. So uh, I think that's a really cool concept. And w one thing I actually want to try in a gameplay is... You know, some of those game bubbles are, are pretty big. Like, you think about the Xerox faction, how many how many systems are there and how many planets within, within each system you'd have, to, you'd have to visit to really wipe them out. But I think it'd be kind of cool to take out, like, their home world in a big, big center of the middle and kind of make their faction space like a jelly donut, a big center in the middle that, that you own and they're around you. You can kind of keep working your way up from there. So that's going to be something I'll try eventually. But I thought that was really cool that they finally got the faction bubble there. Um, so that's something fun to play with. Reason I'm here in, in creative mode is just kind of take a look at the changes because there's actually a lot that they've done in terms of devices and how they differ. So um, 
I brought a couple builds in here that I've modified of my own specifically for Ascension RE Unchained, and I'm just going to go through them because this is going to be the best way to help depict the changes. Uh, first of all, let's go through... Um, so let's talk CPUs. So one of the biggest things that they've done is the focus of Ascension RE is that the SV is now the focal point of your attacks, and SVs are now very lethal combat vessel killers. SVs are going to be your go-to for attacking bases, and they're going to be your go-to for attacking other CVs. Want to take down a, a Dreadnought? The SV is your guy. You no longer need a massive CV to do that, and you no longer really have to do the spinny, spinny strafing, and side runs like that work pretty, pretty well. So uh, that's the biggest change, and the way they've done that is they've actually completely redone the CPU system, the CPU tiers on your devices. So let's go in and take a look. Let's look at CPU statistics. This vessel has 76,000, which this is an SV. In a reforged eating, you get a max of 60,000. However, I only have a basic and two improved. I don't even have a single advanced extender in this ship yet. So each of the improved extenders, here's the change. Each improved now gives you 25,000 CPU. If you go into the menu, the advanced ones now give you 30,000, and you can still add five of them. So when you get to a maxed out ship, uh, I think that's 200, it would give you 226,000 total CPUs available. So that allows you to make ships, heck, this thing's even pretty small for what you could build. This ship right here, 226,000, is only using 154,000. In Reforged Eden, this ship would be a 10 aux core ship. In fact, it is. The Erebus here is a 10 aux core ship that I have in Reforged Eden. I built it for Reforged Eden. The problem is that it's 10 aux core, so you're kind of, that's a super expensive ship. The other problem is that in order to get these things to move any any way well in Reforged Eden, you kind of have to, what I'll say is thruster ward them. You have to put so many thrusters on them. Like, you look at this pot of thrusters back here. Put God mode on. You've got five thrusters on this side, five thrusters on this side, four here. You've got another one buried in here. You've got more behind all these deco vents. You've got to bury so many you know, thruster, 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 thruster. There are all these thrusters everywhere. You've got to bury so many thrusters in an SV and reforged Eden more thrusters in order to get these ships to move. And you look at the statistics here, and this is this is Ascension Unchained. These are really good statistics. 64, 85, 66, 92, 73. If I would have built this ship in Ascension Unchained, I would have built it differently. In Reforged Eden, these were all about 40 millimeters per, or degrees per second. About 35 to 40 at spawn. Um, and the reason I point that out is because in, in Reforged Eden, you have to... You have to use so many thrusters to, to get something to move well, versus here it seems to be more realistic. And and um, the other thing that's kind of nice is that the thrust values were changed, so it, it also uh, makes more sense to use the larger the larger thrusters. It also makes more sense to build bigger SVs, be, because quite frankly you can build bigger SVs here uh, due to the higher CPU. I mean, this ship is 277 tons. Um, yeah, and it's only 155 out of 226, so it's got 50% more CPU you can add to it. Much, much bigger ships, so that's that's really cool there. Um, you know, in, in Reforged Eden, I know the, the one thing um, that you really end up doing in there is you end up using a lot of combat vessels, and, and there you end up, you know, there's different me methods. Some people tank. Uh, there's a lot of spinny, spinny that goes on here. Here you might still do some spinny, spinny. Uh, but from what I've done originally, you actually don't have to spin. And from what I've seen, you can just strafe the enemies. So strafing runs kind of seem more realistic. And then uh, you can kind of zip around them a lot faster while taking down their shields. Now, this type of an SV here is really nice because this one only comes in at Device-wise, two approved extenders, which is really, really cheap, which is really cheap. So it really allows you to get some good ships at early levels. From a weapon side, eight turrets, half minigun, half plasma. And then um, on the weapon side, you've got six plasma cannons. So that's a good amount of, of weaponry. I got a ton of thrust on here. Again, I built this for Reforged, even where you need a ton of thrusters. Um, 
If I had built this for Ascension Unchained, I wouldn't have done that. Speaking of thrusters, the one thing that they've also done here that is really cool, let's type in thrust. Now, typically, if you've, if you've ever built in Reforged Eden, you're typically only using the medium jet thruster. Once you start to get into these larger sizes, this 3x13, 3x10, 3x7, you gain a lot of weight with them, and then if you do any type of block shaping around them, you kind of offset the thrust gain from doing those. So those bigger ones, in most cases, aren't are not worth doing unless you do something like. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the Rabicon that Artemis Rogue made. Uh, awesome ship, but he, he designed it for what the rules were allowed. You can't have a lot of weight on a ship, so what you do is you end up dividing, d designing a ship that's got tons of thrusters everywhere, um, which I mentioned before, kind of thruster wording, right? I kind of did that on some of my ships as well, because you have to. But here what they did is they're now adding Tier 2 and Tier 3 thrusters that do not exist anywhere else. So look at the... Uh, what is this? Advanced 3 by 13 by 3. This gives 7.5 mega newtons of force at 2495 CPU. 7.5 mega newtons. This one, 15.1 at 34. So an extra 1000 CPU and you get double the force. That's really cool. Then you come over here, 30 mega newtons at 6495. Totally worth it. So now you have an upgrade path to get some really, really powerful, powerful thrusters. Now, these thrusters, too, they're not just made of regular materials. They're made of the progenitor tech fragments. So that's where the really cool thing is, is since they've overlaid this on top of Reforged Eden, everything you know from Reforged Eden applies. But now they've given you an upgrade path that this thruster is a 5x2. This thruster is a 5 by 2 It's pretty typical that everybody, uh, most people use a lot of medium thrusters in their builds, or the, the mediums are used very commonly. So it gives you an easy upgrade path to go from this guy up to this guy up to this guy in the same slot. So upgradable gets really, really easier upgradability. They're working on the exact same thing for CVs. Uh, they're not out here yet, but they're going to work on a Tier 2 and a Tier 3 Drive Thruster, as well as Advanced Thrusters. So all those are getting Tier 2, Tier 3 options. The idea behind it being, so you don't have to build something that's got, I mean, this one actually isn't, isn't terrible, but you don't need all those thrusters. Heck, let me look at, let's take a look at this tank here, this Vindicator. This is an old build, something I built a long time ago. Uh, what I did, though, and this is a perfect example of... Um, I'll go spawn this one, it doesn't really matter. This is a perfect example of how the versions are different. So this one, uh, turn it on here. Look at all those thrusters that I have inside. You don't need all that thrust. I mean, this is definitely overkill. This was built in my early days when I thought you needed a lot more thrust than you do. But regardless, all those thrusters have now been reduced down to large plasma thrusters. So that's that's really cool. They're adding additional versions of these as well. I believe actually those might kind of wonder those might actually be cross compatible. Uh, looks like we just got the large pla uh, plasma thruster here. Actually, I think that's available in Reforged Eden as well. Um, but the thrust values are also increased. And that's the other thing that makes it more viable is that you can get away with a little bit less thrust because the thrust is opened up. Um, so earlier I kind of mentioned some of the numbers on some of these ships between Reforged Eden and Ascension Unchained. Thrust values get a little bit uh, more lenient, so you need less thrust to accomplish the same thing. Um, speaking of scalability on, on devices, there are higher-end versions of even things like generators and weapons. Some of them in the game, some of them coming. Uh, the generators, the high-end ones, produce a lot more power, so you need a lot less of them. So, um, you know, in here, generator, 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 all those generators. Again, that was a vanilla build, but you could I reduced those down into advanced generators to make it work. Uh, here... I come up here, I don't know where they are, I just got a couple of them in here. Because uh, it doesn't matter where they are, if we go to the H menu, or the, the menu here, we let's take a look at the generators, at the power they build, they produce. This advanced small generator is 22.5 kilowatts. The small generator is 1.1. 1 
22.5 so that's pretty cool so it, it reduces the need to have tons and tons of generators yeah maybe you need to have access to add one or two small these advanced small generators but their thought behind it is hey we're not envisioning today's technology we're assuming devices are going to scale with time so just because an advanced generator by today's standards produces x why don't we just assume in 300 years that we're going to have much better technology and it's going to produce a lot more power? Kind of eliminates the need to spam devices. So that's really cool. I mean, overall, you look at generators, you look at thrusters, uh, there's some weapon changes coming as well. I mean, the fact that you're using CVs or SVs instead of CVs for combat will alone help with with overall performance and that's their goal is they want to eliminate some of these devices to improve overall game stability and, and overall performance so that's really really cool um the other thing that they've done is they have made more devices cross compatible across other platforms so in other words long range radar never used to be a thing uh let me get this set to daytime really quick So long-range radar never used to be a thing on tanks. It just wasn't an option. This little pole right here, long-range radar, it now exists. I'll go in here, I'll take a seat, and hey, look at this. I got long-range radar, now a thing on HV. So that's really cool. Um, the other thing that's really cool is a furnace is now available on a CV. That's right, furnace is on a CV. You no longer need a base for a furnace. You have decons, everything. So that's really cool. Uh, the other thing that's really cool is they've added tool turrets to SVs. That's right. This little monstrosity here, Tartarus, 21 laser mining drill, 21 laser drills on it, plus a multi-turret because they added the tool turrets, plus a drill turret because they added the drill turrets. Uh... Plasma cannons, plasma turrets, minigun turrets. Hey, this thing's suit. Hey, this is a good example of what you can do with an SV. 76,000. This. To improve extenders only. To improve extend. And this is high G compatible anywhere you want to go. Because the thrust, they give you extra thrust on these ships. So this ship. Uh, has 1.3, call it 1.3 kilotons of total lift available. So the ship, this ship would account for 4.5 G, 450 tons. So you can you can over double the ship's weight on four on 4.5 four G and still get lift. So this thing's full high G compatible with with only two extenders. Like I said, just the two improved extenders. Um, so that's really cool. You kind of get you know. Just a lot more bang for the buck. This little guy, I wanted to spawn him in just to kind of show you. CPU on this is 26,000, which is simply a core and a basic extender. That's really cool. Um, overall cost on it is really, really cheap. So you can just do a lot more uh, at lower levels. So this is level 12 unlock. Um, more available at lower levels. So I think that's that's really awesome storage i almost i should have got this earlier but let's talk storage this is probably one of the best features that they've changed honestly because storage in vanilla and reforged eden is just so maddening you need so many container controllers you need so many extensions that it just takes up an overall lot of a lot of space and and if you think about how it is in reforged and vanilla it's not realistic already anyway i mean you could you could take one 320k and I don't know how many how many asteroids you can stuff into that 320k, but it's not realistic. So like, you know, it's already not realistic, and I'm cool with that. Like, I, I'm not a big tr you know purist that I need everything to be realistic. I play this as a video game, and I think a lot of people out there do as well. But what they've done differently here is with the storage. Number one, they've increased the container controller sizes, and number two, they've reduced the amount of extensions you need. So not only you get more more storage, you need less controller extensions. To put it into specifics, for a CV, you used to in Reforged have a 320k limit. Here, you have 640k limit per controller, double the space. But to get that 640k, you only need nine extenders. Nine. So nine extenders plus the controller gives you 640k storage in Ascension. That's pretty sweet. In, in vanilla, you need 30, 39 extenders plus the controller, a total of 40 
total of 40. Here you need 10, one fourth the amount. On a SVHV, it's even better. On an SV in Reforge, you get 32k, 32k per controller extension total. Here you get 128k, quadruple, four times the amount at 128k. The other cool thing is in Reforge, in order to get that 32k, you needed 256 or 264, or some ridiculous amount to get 32k. Here you need six, six extenders plus. The controller gives you 128k storage. That's freaking amazing. And the reason why I think it's really cool is because you still have to deal with the weights of it. Like, the weight doesn't go away. You still have to deal with that, and you still are limited on volume, but it's not so punishing in that it's it's almost annoying at how punishing it can be at sometimes. Here, it's just kind of wide open. Like, hey, you can carry it. Um, other big change is shields. Uh, SVs are a perfect example of the shields. Uh, this this SV, this tank, has 135,000 shield on it. Yeah, think about that. 135,000 shield out of a heavy shield generator. It charges uber fast, just absorbs tons of, tons of damage, and you can give it back. This guy has... Was it in defense in this one? A standard shield generator that gives 20,000. So HVs don't quite get the, 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 the sh tanking ability that tanks do. So that's the benefit of a tank, is the shields are much longer, larger. This Erebus here, I'm pretty sure, has a heavy shield, 35,000. So you get 35,000 out of heavy on an HV, or on an SV. On an HV, you get 135,000, an extra 100,000. If you don't think it's worth it to give a tank a shot after getting an extra 100,000 shield, pfft, I mean, heck, that's pretty cool. You get 135,000 shield out of a tank, roll up onto a Xenofortress and pound your way at it. Uh, CPU, 170 out of the same 225. So you essentially get the same amount of total CPU to work with. You got a lot of, lot of place to go. I mean, look at all these manual fire weapons, all these turrets. I just slapped them everywhere I could possibly get them. I mean... For Ascension Ari, you could build some big, big tanks and just roll up on places and run over them. So that's really cool, some of those changes that you're seeing. Uh, they did add, on blocks, building, equation, and scenario. These are usable. These are usable blocks, guys. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. Yeah, you can actually put them on your shit. I mean, that looks, I wouldn't do that. But, yeah, I could save the BP, and these are publishable, spawnable blueprints. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting about these blocks, that block has 3,000 hit points. Uh, hardened Steel only has 199. Combat Steel, well, those aren't full blocks, is 359, 3,000. However, the drawback, each block costs 52 CPU. So... Not the worst thing in the world. It's just something kind of cool to use them. Um, what's their mass? Their weight? One kilogram. So I don't, it's just something cool to use. I wouldn't build a ship out of them. You could certainly build some pretty powerful stuff by doing, by using those. Um, but, you know, it's something kind of cool just to add some variety into the game that's not available elsewhere since the blocks already exist. Hey, why not? Um... They do make things craftable here. So I'm pretty sure NPC cores. Some of these are craftable. I think it's the NPC core. Allowed in BP true. Yes. Allowed in BP false. That core makes sense. Advanced core. I'm not sure it doesn't say if it's allowed in the BP. NPC Player NPC core. Yeah, maybe this is it. Allowed in BA, CV, SV, HV. I'm not sure. I think this is the one that's craftable by the, and available by the players. So that one is pretty cool because I think it gives you unlimited power and oxygen or something like that. So uh, they do have more items like that. That's just one of them. Uh, the other thing that they do... Get rid of this. I saw it earlier. I think it was down here. New icons. So these are all your boosters. The blues and reds are your armor boosters. 
for some reason the jetpack booster doesn't have an icon unless they took it um they're also working on weapons i don't know this a light rocket that's kind of cool I don't know if that's theirs or not. I haven't seen that before. I've seen some of the artwork. They're making this stuff daily. Like, they're making tons of new artwork for all this stuff custom in house. Some of this might be Engineer Bolt. I'm not sure. I think that's a normal game thing. Um, so, that's really cool that they're doing more craftable items. More stuff is coming. I do know that. Uh, the other thing that they're adding is for servers is a trading system for buying and selling real estate or basically a way to buy and sell CVs and bases to uh, to the game and then the game makes them available for other people to buy. Um, I don't know if the mechanic, I think the mechanic allows you to sell stuff and maybe it doesn't always get bought. I'm not sure how that works. Um, but anyway, I know there's a new built-in um, trading system for it. So, um yeah, I'm going to go through my list here. Sorry, I have a list here that I've been trying to make sure I covered everything. You know, and the big thing, like I said, it's just the SVs and HVs. Dude, they are powerful. They are totally worth it. SVs are the king of combat. They really are. Um, oh, let's talk about CVs really quick. So overall, CVs haven't, have not changed. CVs have not changed in terms of CPU. Uh, I'm going to bring up Zeus because... Um, interesting 2.55 it should be 2.1 what changed I wonder if they know they did that I'll have to see 350,000 on the I think these are higher now so it looks like you get a little bit extra CPU out of the out of the CVs um that's that's different though. That wasn't like that a couple days ago. Uh, but the thrust has increased. It's a lot more. So I know in uh, Reforged Eden, I think I get fifteen or sixteen hundred somewhere in there. Here you get twenty four or sixty. So almost double the thrust out of each thruster. So you need a lot less thrusters. Is kind of the nice thing. But overall, beyond that, nothing else has really changed. I don't believe. Um, Let's see here. There are the turrets, the miniguns. Still got 12,500 CPU. I know Reforged Eden is going through a change here soon on CPU. Um, trying to think if there's anything on the ship itself that would have changed, though. Oh, let's look at let's look at the shield. I will just search it. Advanced shield. Oh, it doesn't tell me. Go in here. Gotta love some of the menus. Alright, so the... Advanced Shield Generator, 40,000 HP capacity. Uh, are, is that up a little bit? I think that's a little bit higher. The regular Shield Generator, 17,500. This one, 15,000. So the Compact is not much lower than the sh regular Shield. Uh, the Bastion, oh that's a million, that's bigger. That one's bigger. Regenerative is 750,000, so those are definitely bigger. Uh, the Dreadnought is a half a million, so that's a huge one. You know, I went up against a Legacy ship the other night, last night. I was just playing around with it. It takes a long time to take their shields down. It takes a really long time. So, yeah, big changes there. Uh, the other thing, warp drives. Warp drives changed. I missed that earlier. Uh, warp drives, standard warp drive. A light year's 100 light year jump on the standard warp drive. On the advanced warp drive, 200 light year jump. So that's base, base, what is this one? 300 light year jump on the antimatter. So on the advanced warp drive, if you get a couple of the um, navigational data packs, which each extend your light years by two, you could easily make that progenitor jump without ever doing the quest. Now you want to unlock the gates, do it properly, blah, 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 but that progenitor jump now becomes much easier, and now it's easier just to bring your ship across rather than having to deal with jumping through the gates, spawning shit over there, which is super unrealistic. Like, you know, it's not realistic to, to go through a warp gate and then all of a sudden dig a ship out of your pocket and dig all your stuff and just throw it out there in space. So now you can actually jump across and that's really cool. So awesome. Well, let's take a look at the other devices. Make sure I'm not missing anything else in here. Um, 
Otherwise, I think that's kind of the gist of it. I do plan on doing a full playthrough. Actually, right now I'm doing a, doing a play right now just on my own just to try to check it out. Uh, admittedly, I've, I haven't done a lot of the quests. I, I need to get in and do some of those. Uh, I know, like I said earlier, they added like 600 hours or so, something like that of content in terms of quests and things to do and missions and and whatnot. I can't even begin to speak to all that stuff, but overall, I have to say this is I'm I'm pretty impressed with this mod or this this scenario as a whole, uh, just in terms of everything that it pulls together. Some of the some of the you know just I would say overall smart changes with reducing devices giving us higher tier options, reducing the amount of container controllers you need. You know, some of that stuff is just no-brainer stuff that was, yeah, I guess to a certain extent somewhat more realistic, but it was super unrealistic anyway, so hey, whatever. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, anyway, thanks for joining. I think that's all I got for now. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to let me know. Uh, otherwise, I do plan on doing a playthrough of this at some point and hopefully get the series up on YouTube like I did for Reforged Galaxy. Uh, but that'll probably uh, occur over the next month or so. Who knows, maybe I'll get motivated and get that out there sooner than later. But All right, anyway, thanks for joining. That's all I got. If you liked what you saw, please do like, like and subscribe. And, of course, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. Take care, everyone. See you next time.